two words. Okay. So these verses about the different pastimes of Krishna with his various devotees, are they're similar. They're like that. In the, on the surface, they may be very plain and simple. Oh, yeah, they went to the pasturing grounds with the cows, and then they came. But if you start to meditate on those verses, while meditate. chanting japa especially, they'll start to reveal. Uh, don't think the Shastra is just a book. Uh, the First of all, the Shastras are all persons. They're eternal persons. And they each have particular intelligence according to the purport of the Shastra, particular Shastra. So Srimad Bhagavatam is the uh, commentary on Vedanta Sutra. Mm -hmm. The Vedanta Sutra is the conclusion of the whole Vedic literatures. So Srimad Bhagavatam being the commentary on it contains the essence of Vedanta, you see. So it's not just an ordinary scripture, it's, it's very transcendental, very potent. So what the, the Goswamis in Vrindavan used to do was that they would sit and chant japa, and they would have in front of them a pile of palm leaf verses. And one by one they would relish all these verses according to the particular transcendental purpose that they had, you see. So if they were following in the footsteps of the gopis, let's say, they would have a collection of verses about the gopis and other verses that they found inspiring. And then as they would chant, they, they, would, they would read the, in between the rounds, let's say, they would read the verses. And then keeping the verse in their mind, they would chant and, and meditate on that verse. And the verse would reveal more and more and more in the reflection of the holy name. See how that works? Vibhava, Krishna is the, the main cause, and the devotee is the impelling cause. The ashraya is the, the devotee is the is the the ocean or the shelter or the reservoir of the love, transcendental love, and Krishna is the ashrita or the object of that love. So, when you have the shastra, which is the devotee, because it's the impelling cause, and you have Krishna in the form of his holy name, you see, this sets up a, a dynamic of vibhava, and vibhava is the cause of bhava. It's the cause of rasa. Okay, it's the first element of the five bhavas. So, beginning from you get these two things together in your consciousness, stuff is going to happen. <laughs> yes. If it because doesn't, then, there was a tendency to yeah. speculate. There would be mental process and not no, 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 no. We don't want no. We don't. Speculation is when you're doing it. Mm -hmm. Revelation is when you allow Krishna to reveal, you know, the deep meaning. See, the, the absolute truth is self-revealing. The problem is we get in our minds in between us and the absolute truth. You know, we're so mental, we think we have to think about everything, right? And I, I didn't say to think about it, I said to contemplate. When you contemplate something, you simply hold it in your mind. You're not thinking about it. You're not acting on it with logic. Um, you're not trying to use your mind. Analytical. It's not, yeah. It's not Sankhya. No, it's not Sankhya. Sankhya means to exercise the intelligence to tell the differences between different things. By the time you reach this stage of what I call contemplation, you've already done all that. That's already... You've already analyzed it to pieces and taken it by that's what we're doing in this discussion we're looking at vibhava right now and we're analyzing vibhava into its components okay the, the basic cause and the impelling cause vibhava in general is the cause of rasa the cause of devotional service but the 
the two elements of that are the basic cause and the impelling cause. So in this instance, in this example, uh, meditating on the scriptures, following the footsteps of a particular devotee, the impelling cause is Krishna in the form of the scriptures, and the basic cause is Krishna in the form of his holy name. So here again we have an instance where Krishna becomes both the basic and the impelling cause. Because even though the scriptures have their own individuality, you know, they're basically emanated by, by Krishna. They're expansions of Krishna. So we get those, both of those things in our minds and, and just hold them there. We don't have to do anything. Well, not like the painting, like we were analyzing because of this. That was like kind of sunky. Right, right. Yeah, it, you don't have to analyze. Okay. Yeah. You know, earlier today we were looking at a painting and we were analyzing the rasas and the different emotions in, in the painting. And that's, that's preliminary to contemplation. You see, the analysis has to be there because let's say that I determined that I have a, a, a rasa of friendship with the Lord. And I want to develop my rasa of friendship. Uh, so then I would start seeking out some devotee in whose mood I could follow. Do I want to be a friend of Krishna in the form of Vasudev, you know, and be like Arjuna and fight next to Krishna for the, for the same cause? Or do I want to be more like Sudam or Subal and help Krishna in his pastimes with the gopis and like that? See, what kind of friend do I want to be? So which devotee do I want to follow? So once I had figured that out by analysis, then I would take verses, slokas, that are relevant to those particular uh, relationships, and I would hold them in my mind and contemplate them during japa. See? That's the process. It's not that, not, you don't think about them. At that point, the thinking is all done. You pass the thinking. Now you're in contemplation. In contemplation, it's more like when you go into a museum and you see a beautiful painting. And you sit down and you just look at this painting. You don't think about it. You don't analyze it. You know, if you've done your homework, you already know the, the life story, the artist, what caused him to paint that particular painting, the type of colors, the, the, the composition, the, the, you know, the style of materials and blah, blah, blah. You know, if you've done your homework, you already know all that technical stuff about the painting. All you do is you sit down and you experience the painting. You allow the painting to wash over you and you just absorb the impressions of the painting. You enter into the painting and you live in the painting. Uh, you experience the painting like that. So anyway, when, when we experience the, the Shastra, when we experience the, uh, the verses of the scripture like that, it's, that's how we approach them, like in, in an aesthetic appreciation, a mood of aesthetic appreciation that, okay, using the same example of a friend, that, oh, here's a beautiful verse that expresses uh, the, uh, the friendship. French. Yeah, let's say if it's fr friendship in Vrindavan, Brajlila. It ex perfectly expresses the friendship of my particular favorite devotee uh, with Krishna. And so I just simply hold that verse in my mind and... and it develops gradually. You know, like if you have a film that's been exposed and you go in the lab and you put it in the chemicals, you know, and then you, you wash it with different reagents and stuff and gradually you see the picture come out, you know. When you first take the impression, you first make the exposure, it's not visible. If you look at the film, you don't see anything. You know? Or making print, you know, when you first make a print, uh, yeah, I'm talking about ancient technology. <laughs> 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 Everything's digital now. But in the old days, back when we had dinosaurs and like that, <laughs> you, you took a piece of, of paper and you projected a negative on it and you made a print and then you had to develop the print. And at first, there's nothing on the piece of paper. You can't see a thing. But then you put it in the developer 
and you wash it and stuff, and you, you'll see it gradually come out, you know. It's really cool. And then you, you, you let it get, you, the way you control the contrast is that you control the developer timing. Uh, the amount of time that, the, that it stays in the developer. And then you take it out and you put it in the fixer and fix it. And then you get, that's, that's the contrast that you get, especially on a black and white print. So uh, it's like that with your inner devotional service, too. You, you take a shloka and you hold it in your mind while chanting the holy name and withdrawing the senses from the sense objects. And you just contemplate, aesthetically contemplate, the shloka. And the shloka will reveal itself to you. You will enter into the shloka, just like developing the picture on the, pr on the paper, on the print, or the negative. Uh, it'll gradually come into view, and then it'll get clearer and clearer 